بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين وصلى الله وسلم على نبينا محمد وعلى اله وصحبه وسلم من بعد اي لحبت في الله continuing on in our series our brief uh, study of Dr. Saleh Saleh his um, translation with a small editorial of the Nawak al Islam the nullifiers of faith and we reach the third part and we'll be pretty brief and as the doctor Rahmatullahi he didn't uh, uh, he just made small tarikat he just made a very small very brief editorial so and we'll expand on some things uh, as uh, we feel necessary so the third point is the third uh, nullifier faith من لم يكفر مشركين أو شط في كفرهم أو صحها مذهبهم كفر. Imam Muhammad ibn Abdul Wahab رحمه الله تعالى he said that the third nullifier of uh, faith <coughs> is the one who does not declare a pagan to be uh, a disbeliever or doubts that they are or has doubt that they are really on disbelief or authenticates their medhab or their their belief, their faith has disbelieved. And this comes also uh, stems from a qaida that Shaykh al-Islam Ibn Taymiyyah said that man yukafara man lam yukafara kafar fu huwa kafar that whoever does not declare a disbeliever to be a disbeliever, then he's a disbeliever. And the scholars, they point out that this is in regards to uh, those people uh, with kufr asliya, or that they are uh, originally disbelievers, meaning that it's clear there's no doubt in Islam that they're a disbeliever. For example, we would say a Jew and a Christian are not Muslim, they are disbelievers in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, and his messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, or a Buddhist, or a Hindu, or a Sikh, or whatever, that all of these are faiths outside of the fold of Islam. They don't believe in Islam, Asla, or even the Nation of Islam, who is a sect that believes, that, that considers themselves Muslim, although they don't really follow Islam, and they know they don't really follow Islam. Uh, they take bits and pieces of Islam, but in fact you'll find their leadership quoting more from the, uh, the, the Bible than the Quran. And they have a deviant beliefs that differ with both Islam and uh, and uh, Christianity or what have you. So they, they have their own Masonic belief. So the one who does not hold that these groups that are clearly outside of the fold of Islam, they contradict Tawheed from the Asl, from their, their foundation and their beliefs by saying Jesus is the Son of God or Jesus is God. Miriam is, uh, she is, um, you know, to be worshipped, or she's a, a divine saint that you should revere and worship. Uh, the angel Jibreel is someone you should worship. All of these beliefs are contra contradictory. They contradict Islam in totality. Because Islam, as we've already mentioned, is the religion of Tawheed. It's a religion of pure monotheism in that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the only one who created the heavens and the earth, he's the only one worthy of worship, and he's the only provider and sustainer. You know, it's all it's through Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. His he is our razak. He provides us with the ability to be able to provide for our families, or the ability to attain a, a job or what have you. And that he has divine names and attributes as we've already uh, spoken about. And so those beliefs, those other religions, they contradict that in totality because they have shirk. They, they contain shirk khalas, you know, pure shirk. Whereas Islam is pure tawheed and iman. So the one, as Sheikh Muhammad ibn al-Wahhab said, Man lam yukafir al-mushrikeen, o shakr fi kufrihim, o sahaha madhabahum, kafir. The one who does not declare um, or does not hold a pagan or a disbeliever, or someone who commits shirk to to be a disbeliever, 
or has doubt that they are really disbelief, whether they're disbelievers or not, or authenticate their religion or their faith, then this person has disbelieved. And this is very important because for us to understand, and unfortunately those people who often hold these beliefs will not study a treatise like this, nor do they really have concern about that, but you have a lot of people who um, associate themselves with Islam or that in fact they're Muslims that are very jahil or, or whatever the reasons, that they have various levels of deviation with regards to this principle. For example, I've known uh, Muslims when I was uh, a fairly new Muslim, but I had enough knowledge to know that what this Imam was stating was incorrect, and he was an Imam, and he was an Imam, also a convert, or revert as you'd like to say, uh, like myself, and he, um, you know, used to say that, you know, the Jews and Christians are our brothers in faith, or they're, they're our brothers, and, uh, you know, don't call them disbelievers, or things like this, and... However, but Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala makes takfir of them. So there's no way. So when you say that they are believers, that they are Muslims, in fact, that Jews and Christians are actually Muslims, or or that we're all going to paradise, like even some people in from where my locality, I'm from Seattle, Washington, and you have an individual, I believe he's from Seattle, I've never met him, I've heard of him, they call him Sheikh Jamal. Possibly I may even know him, maybe I've seen him before, I don't know. And he travels around the country, and perhaps maybe they travel around the world, and they have a group called the Three Amigos. And basically it's him, supposedly a representative of Islam, and it is uh, a, a, a a rabbi, you know, which is meaning of he's of the Jewish, Jewish faith, and a, a leader in the Jewish community, like their imams. And you have the third one being a, a Catholic priest, I believe. <clears throat> and so they go around there, the three amigos, and basically he's calling to a greater or lesser extent to Wahdah that, uh, al that it's just one religion, almost like a one world faith. However, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, this contradicts the Quran in totality and by necessity, by Dorora. So I've heard him make statements that take him out of the fold of Islam, saying that, you know, on the radio, I listen to it on NPR, so you can find it on a National Public Radio, not advertising National Public Radio, but this is something I listen to often when I'm back in the States. And he said that they, uh, you know, he was asked or something about, and even the, the non-Muslim announcers were kind of shocked, and uh, radio uh, facilitators, because they know that also, you know, each of these faiths, we all believe that we are on the truth and we believe that those who oppose them are on falsehood. That's what makes him, that's why he devotes his life to being a Catholic priest. That's why he devotes his life to being a Jewish rabbi. That's why a Muslim devotes their life to worshiping Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala because they believe that the other paths are false, that they're going to lead you to the hellfire. But this guy, Jamal, he said that when asked, uh, I think it was about the, the Jewish rabbi, or uh, if I recall, and the radio host uh, said, made a, uh, asked a question, and he responded, he said, you know, basically we're all going to paradise, you just have a different way, is what he said. And this is, a, I'm paraphrasing what he said, because I've forgotten the exact text or nuss that he said, but you can find it on uh, National Public Radio if you search through their episodes or you type in the three amigos, you can find out about their disbelief. And this is Kufr al-Akbar, this takes you out of the fold of Islam and this is in direct contradiction. This is exactly what we're talking about and that some of the people, they believe, they want to make Wahta the Idyan, they want to make it uh, the religion, uh, so they want to compromise the religion of Islam to such an extent. And it's not a personal matter. It's the fact that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, Fi Kitab al-Kareem, is made takfir of the Jews and the Christian, and anyone who is not a Muslim, you must accept Islam. This is the path to paradise. This is what the Muslim believes is the Suratullah Mustaqim. This is what it is, the straight path to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. This is Allah's religion. 
Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says to Kitab al-Kareem, إِنَّ الَّذِينَ كَفَرُوا مِنْ أَهْلِ الْكِتَابِ وَالْمُشْرِكِينَ فِي نَارِ جَهَنَّمِ Verily those people who disbelieve from most uh, Ahl al-Kitab, meaning the Jews and the Christians, and the uh, Mushrikeen, the pagans, meaning all the other faiths like Hinduism, Sikhism, Buddhism, whatever, that they are in the hellfire forever. That if you die upon those faiths, you'll be in the hellfire forever. That's not my choice. I can't say, well, I love my parents, I love this, I love my family, and I, and I do love my family, and they're non-Muslim, but I can't, I, there's nothing I can do to help them except call them to Islam. I won't be able to save them from the hellfire, and I believe this. This is what Islam teaches us. This is what the Quran, uh, this is what the speech of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, this is what Allah said. And this is what the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said as well. So that the person who doubts about this, then this person has disbelieved as well. So this is what Imam Muhammad was saying. Here's what Dr. Saadi said in regards to that. He said, <clears throat> and he brought the, the nas, he brought an ayah from the Quran where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, um, and if any amongst you take them wholeheartedly as friends, then surely he is one of the he is one of them. This is what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in Surah in, in, in the Quran. And then he says, this is one of the greatest contradictions to Tawheed. So this is one of the things that uh, that undermines Tawheed the most. One of them. He says, it is important to caution that many Muslims are reluctant and feel ashamed to say the word kufr, to describe a disbeliever, or to point out their acts of shirk. Some even look at kufar with great deal of admiration, fear, and obedience. Those have an inferiority complex that leads them to become blind followers and defenders of the kuffar in their ways. They are at grave danger since this may melt their identity, this may melt their Islamic identity because there, there's a difference between having some admiration and stuff like this. Well, not all these aspects. It depends on to what level that a person is doing these things that uh, as far as them uh, leaving the fold of Islam or not. But the point is, is that Islam is a religion of, of Izzah, of honor, that you should not be shameful of your Islamic identity. And then he says, the Muslim's position about these matters must be dis disassociation from kufr and shirk, but love for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and his prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and the believers and the mu'mineen. So then, he mentions the ayat where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says we can have in Kareem, let not the believers take the disbelievers as awliya, supporters, helpers, instead of believers, and whoever does that will never be helped by Allah in any way, except if indeed you fear a danger from them. And Allah warns you against himself, his punishment, and to Allah is the final return. So this lets us know, in a very brief way, the importance of following uh, the Islamic principles and the Islamic creed and understanding that there is no unity of faiths. That Islam is here to, uh, the Muslim is here to share the message of Islam with others to help them leave from dhulamat al nur to help them leave from darkness to light. That Islam is that light that's shining through the window now. This is Islam. Islam is that brightness to Give, call the people, call humanity back to the worship of Allah alone, to the worship of God alone, without worshiping any other false deities, that we don't need to worship the prophets, no matter high, how high, high uh, in status they were, and beloved to Allah, because they're the best of humanity. When we talk about Adam, we talk about Nuh, we talk about Ibrahim, we talk about Hud, we talk about Ismail, we talk about Jesus, we talk about Muhammad, alayhim afdal salatu wa salam, and, and Jesus and all the prophets, alayhim afdal salatu wa salam, and Dawood, alayhim salatu wa salam. They were the best of mankind. They were the best of mankind. But we don't worship any of them. We don't take any of them to divinity. And that's what distinguishes Islam and Tawheed from shirk and the belief of others. And that's why the one who has doubt that the, that uh, they are in disbelief, then they have disbelieved. Because Allah makes takfir of them. So then who are you? If you 
denying what Allah is saying, then that means you disbelieve in what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is saying. You think you know better, or you're ignorant of it, or whatever the situation is, but Allah makes takfir of them. So we make takfir of them. And we ask Allah the Almighty to accept our good and forgive our evil. Sallallahu alayhi wa sallam ala nabiyyina Muhammad wa ala alayhi wa sallam.